What's good, everybody? It's your boy, Yoshe Duke Jackson, back at it again with another video here. And I'm so glad to be here on the King Gunda channel. Make sure you guys um, subscribe to the video. And today we have coming back for the second interview uh, on the channel, uh, Dr. Mark Echoes. I'll let him explain who he is um, and, and what he's authored here. Okay. Thank you. Uh, thank you, uh, Brother Olshay. Uh Honored to be back on King Gonda again. Uh, Dr. Mark Eccles, I am the author of African Diaspora Relationships. Uh, for the past 20 years, I have specialized in the focus, the study, and the research of intercultural relationships between Black people from two different countries, uh, a relationship dynamic which I have named African Diaspora Relationships. All right. And uh, Kim, give him a round of applause here. I definitely thank Dr. Mark for, for coming on today. Um, our first interview here, because you reached out to me on Facebook. I didn't, I wasn't aware of who you were in your work. Right. Um, but some other people that have been on the platform were aware of you. Um, and I believe the first show that we talked about was called Why Dating and Relationships Are Challenging Inside of the Pan-African Community. And to be fair, that had a pretty good watch time. We had almost people spending about 12 to 13 minutes on that particular episode. Um, subsequently, after you came another accomplished PhD, a Dr. T. Hassan Johnson, who was holding forth over at the great Fresno State University, teaching in um, black masculinity studies and Africana studies over there. Yes. Uh, but then right after that, uh, there was an interview with uh, with brother George Macon, which was also, uh, I would say, a little bit more controversial than Dr. T. S. N. Johnson, which was called "Why African American Men Need to Stop Complaining About African American Women." Um, you've seen both of those interviews. You've watched yeah. your interview, um, and you wanted to discuss uh, maybe uh, in totality a culmination of some of the things you heard on all of those interviews. Uh, why is that? I did. First, it was just fascinating to me. Uh, I, in the 20 years that I've been uh, doing this work and uh, doing research and discussing about African diaspora relationships, I've always said that it's the least discussed relationship dynamic in the Black community. And now, uh, coming from our discussion a couple of weeks ago, you just have these excellent talking points uh, coming from uh, first Dr. Tia San Johnson, uh, mm -hmm. another brother that I have followed uh, on YouTube and uh, enjoyed his content. So him talking about uh, the, the velvet painting and uh, black men and, and particularly educated black men trying to find that ideal black love and being unable to do so. And many of them as a result uh, dating and finding love within the African diaspora. And then uh, immediately following that brother, George Macon taking uh, some exception to that. And uh, his discussion on uh, African-American men need to stop blaming uh, African-American women for uh, their lack of support uh, and uh, failing to find love. Uh, both were interesting to me uh, because uh, it, it, they illustrated uh, the controversy of uh, anyone dating outside of the uh, African American community. Mm -hmm. uh, that's something that uh, people in African diaspora relationships, uh, including myself, often uh, find themselves um, surprised by. Okay. Uh, not under any delusion of the potential controversy when you date outside, but uh, the general attitude I found uh, mm -hmm. in my research and also uh, including myself, mm -hmm. when you're dating somebody in the African diaspora that you are with a black person. Right. So uh, it should be uh, accepted. What was, the general, what was the general attitude that you had found that was shocking to you? What was that? What's that attitude? Well, I could backtrack to uh, one thing, uh, like the statement that I made uh, in our first uh, discussion, uh, get in where you fit in. 
and just the belief that uh that means that okay well if you fit in the diaspora community that means that you could not fit in the african american community and what i found with uh myself in addition to most in african diaspora relationships that tends not to be the motivating factor the motivating factor is not that they could not fit into our own community mm -hmm. that they found what they were looking for in the diaspora community Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I see because it's because I, I don't know if you want to go there, but I, I've heard, for example, you know, I don't deal with um, any sort of interracial topics on the Kangana channel, but on my main channel, uh, it's a great topic of discussion with African American men or black men who date white women or mm -hmm. Asian women or so on and so forth. And the, the retort from some African-American women might be, well, you could not handle a strong black woman. So this is the reason why you're dating this white woman or dating this right. a woman or, or vice versa. But what you're saying is, is that, you know, because I, I hear at the time when black men were going to Brazil it was like, well, you guys are just going and dealing with them because you can't deal with us. And what you're saying is it's not that 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 we could not deal in the African-American community, just that we so happened to find what we liked in this other community that is really still black, that it's not that we, you know, couldn't find love in the African American community. We just happened to be where, where they be in location or where they be where we were, or what our interests were at that time. We all we, we had more of a um, if you could say more opportunities than maybe the the, the local guy. We want to be honest because you're a PhD, and um, I, I found that the men that are more educated have more of an opportunity to 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 to, to, to travel. Um, to know people, to have different colleagues, and that's what's available to them versus a person that might be in a local city or something like that. Is that where you're getting at? Uh, to a point, yeah. And actually, I, I could elaborate. Um, yeah, on, sure. And, and also, I'll go more into my uh, my my personal situation uh, as an example. Okay. So previously, when we talked about, uh, I, I had uh, alluded to uh, going from dating African American women to dating exclusively uh, in the diaspora community, uh, dating and marrying exclusively in the uh, diaspora community for the past 22 years. And I say specifically that it was a long story that I will make short. So I'll elaborate on that story and make the, the short story a little bit longer. So um, again, prior to dating in the African diaspora community, I did date African-American women. And I know me personally, uh, I've never had an issue finding African-American women to date. Uh, uh, not suggesting that uh, I was a player. You are something else. You know that? You are something else. But, you know, I, I, I did not suffer from a lack of female company. Uh, okay. And uh, as a matter of fact, uh, just as I was about to enter into the African diaspora dating uh, with an African woman, uh, there were three African-American women that were very much interested in me at that time. Okay. Uh, one was an ex that wanted to get back together. Uh, another uh, was a woman I had met in school. And I actually I was going for my master's degree at that time. Okay. So, woman I had met in school and another woman that I met outside of school. And uh, as a matter of fact, uh, when I had my first date with my uh, uh, ex-wife, I had a date with uh, an African American woman uh, at this on the same day. I went to uh, lunch with the African woman, mm -hmm. to dinner with the African American woman, mm -hmm. and uh, long story short, I had a better time with the African woman. Okay, so much so that I actually cut the dinner date with the African American woman short, so I could see the uh, African woman afterwards. Okay. So that was the beginning uh, of the African diaspora relationships uh, for me. Okay. So, uh, again, it was not the rejection or the inability to be in my community more so than it was uh, finding what I was looking for in the diaspora community. And I found that in most cases, mm -hmm. that tends to be uh, the situation for uh, most uh, people, uh, African-Americans that find themselves in African diaspora relationships. It's not that they're re rejecting our culture. It's mm -hmm. uh, 
they have an understanding of the global black culture. There's, there's a global black community. Right. Uh, uh, and I'll, I'll make that point, you know, throughout our discussion. It's a global black community. Mm-hmm. And uh, those who find themselves in African diaspora relationships uh, have an awareness of that. Mm-hmm, 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 mm-hmm. So, you know, let me ask you this because you, you, you made the point we were talking about this before on Facebook and that, you know, if you're a person that has the Pan-African um, spirit, which, you know, you do and I do. Um, and my life has been completely changed. I mean, even the person that's editing this, which is probably Kim, he is, you know, in Uganda. I met him in Uganda. Um, I've met friends that have changed my life that are not in the African American community um, that have helped me do do things uh, that I, I would have never been able to achieve in the black community that we come from. Uh, but however, why is there so much pressure? Do you feel that for you know educated black men um, that that have skills and have talent? Um, I, I do see that there is a little bit of, 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 of strife when you do take your talents to the global black community instead of within our community um, where many of our women are, are still single. Do, do you think there is um, um, some level of strife because, well, you know, your wife is still black. That's nice, but she's not an African-American. Again, I think that there is controversy whenever you you go outside, but that's also because so many of us lack that awareness uh, that of the not just the global black community, but the power of the global black community and what that means, not just for uh, uh, blacks overseas, but for us here as well. You know, these concepts, you know, again, are not new. You know, some of our greatest minds from the Marcus Garvey's. Uh, from the W.E.B. Du Bois, uh, uh, from uh, the Stokely Carmichael's, uh, from Kwame Nkrumah, uh, the, the the recently uh, late uh, Dr. Uh, uh, Rashidi. You know, uh, they all had the awareness of the global Black community, uh, the uh, potential of us connecting and, and working together. It's something that many of us don't have that understanding that's why it tends to be controversial. That's also why I think it's not surprising that you see so many educated uh, brothers dating and marrying in, in the African diaspora because they do have that understanding and that focus. But I'll tell you what, one thing I've noticed is that it's not just the educated brothers. Uh, I have noticed that a, a lot of brothers in the military uh, mm. African diaspora relationships. Uh, these are, are uh, men, and in many cases, women as well. Uh, I've seen both. Uh, these are people who have traveled. Uh, mm-hmm. They've seen the world. They've, been, they've uh, had interactions with different people throughout the world, including other Black people in the world, as well as people who live in diverse communities. And all of these individuals that often enter the African diaspora relationships and are successful in, in these relationships. They had the understanding that uh, uh, this is not meant as an insult, but it, again, it's part of the perspective that the world is bigger than the hood. Mm-hmm. And there is a global black community and there are benefits of tapping into it. I see. So let me, um, let's talk about this whole thing because, you know, a, a lot of, The world is bigger than than the hood, okay? And I can I can get that. But you know, also you have um, a lot of resources, um, you know, that come. You know, like you talked about, yeah, I'm, you know, just for somebody that would be pushing back, right? Like, like let's say, like a George Macon. I know that you, you and Dr. T. S. On Johnson, I believe that you both of you feel that in his retort um, that he was maybe taking T. Assange Johnson's argument and, you know, maybe moving a little bit parallel from the point, from the center position. But, you know, a, a lot of the, the this whole idea of black men dating outside of the, of the community and stuff like that has something to do with, well, the, the reason why those women might be what other guys are looking for is because their men are more of a reflection of leadership than the black man from our community. And that re- re- really, you know, you have a lot of these people that are coming from, you know, Africa to America. They're coming from other places to America. 
Uh, you know, some of them are benefiting from the things that our forefathers laid the foundation from. And um, and if we were doing what we were supposed to be doing as black men, then our women would be more what we want them to be versus us going over to deal with um, somebody else in, 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 the, in the diaspora where their women are, are more traditional because their men are behaving better than us. When you hear something like that, what do you how do you feel and how do you take that? I mean, obviously, that's that's his perspective. Okay. Um, uh, when when you basically, I still think that's that's a perspective that that does not quite grasp uh, the power of the the global black community and, okay. and what what we could learn from each other. You no, know, mm -hmm. one thing that I theorize about African diaspora relationships, and I admit this is a theory, but but one of the the, the many benefits of it is is positive cultural modeling that these are cultures that we originally come from uh, mm -hmm. these are relationship dynamics that we originally come from uh, uh entering these type of relationships we learn from one another we can okay. take these lessons back to our own communities you know pick mm -hmm. and choose what works best for us so mm -hmm. uh there are many ways that we can teach learn and grow uh, in our community again we're connected uh, uh and again that's my perspective as a pan-africanist uh, mm -hmm. uh as someone that believes in the in a global black community uh but we can learn from one one another uh these are relationships that uh can strengthen us uh overall so uh to me it's not running away from uh problems uh it is finding it's having the the freedom and the understanding that uh, when you are aware of the global black community, there's no need to limit yourself. Mm -hmm. uh, you could find what you want. You could use resources. You mm -hmm. could share, you could connect, you could collaborate. And all of us will benefit as a result. And I think that uh, in the grand scheme of things, when we're talking about alternative relationships, mm -hmm. these are the only alternative relationships that strengthen us and have mm -hmm. to strengthen us. So. Mm -hmm. uh, and that um uh in the root uh i i don't agree mm -hmm. uh I, I don't agree uh understanding where he's coming from but just having that different perspective mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know what i want to talk about is um with all of the you know how, how can i say this with all of the issues, um, you know, that we may have as a global, play, you know, uh, community with some of the, 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 the tribalism. I mean, you know, obviously there was a situation where you had a particular lady um, that was in Tanzania that was a Jamaican American. Mm -hmm. And then that particular lady said that you know, she didn't want to do any business with African Americans again. And you have, um, you know, those sorts of, um, you know, nuances that happen. Um, but, but but I was listening to another YouTuber that in the Pan Africanism Strikes Back, and he said that um, that it's a myth that there is even a real division between blacks and the global black community that doesn't really exist. Um, you talked about the fact that you know your sons were um, were hanging out at, at a, a sleepover with somebody else's house, and all of them were. Um, half african-american or half caribbean or half nigerian half something george macon himself is a product of a, a black cuban and a mother and a um, um a black african-american father and that this that. whole what'd you say i, said, I didn't know that i said interesting yeah yeah he is so there so this whole thing that you know in cities like philadelphia and new york and possibly atlanta that's what you see a lot you see a lot of intergrouping that this whole idea that you know, there is some problem um, in the in this, uh, you know, diasporan space. It really is a myth because um, you hear about it, but you don't really see it. You, what you really see is more people uh, coming together, more or less, than those who are trying to push some sort of division. How do you feel about that? I mean, in the community that you work in and stuff like that. Yeah, uh, the division that that is this is this uh, only. Uh, for people that want to put up those barriers, uh, people that that uh, lack the open mindedness, mm -hmm. uh, and and it could be ridiculous. 
the one one thing that I I had shared with you before we came on, I had shared a uh, a photo uh, of uh, black female Olympic athletes, right, uh, from uh, Jamaica, uh, the U.S. and Great Britain uh, specifically. You had Jamaica on the left, uh, the USA uh, in the center, and Great Britain on the right. Uh, if you take away those flags and the national uniforms, all you see is a group of black women. Right. They, they look the same. Mm -hmm. uh, I would challenge anybody, uh, uh, even the most uh, 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 adamant us versus them person. All you can see if you put those women in dresses is a group of black women. Right. Uh, you couldn't tell uh, who belonged where. Right. Uh, you couldn't tell who was Jamaican. You couldn't tell who was African American. And Great Britain, you know, just knowing the, the racial makeup of of, uh, of blacks in Great Britain, uh, they could be Caribbean, they could be African, or again, they could be a product of of that mix. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, for those in African diaspora relationships, uh, for those who successfully are able to. Uh, build not just romantic relationships, but friendships and, and business relationships uh, throughout the diaspora. That's all we see. Uh, when I look at that photo, all I see is a, a group of black women, beautiful black women. And mm -hmm. uh, I see that because that's what it, that's what it is. You take away those flags. I challenge anybody, whether you're Pan-Africanist or not, whether you're Pan-Africanist, black nationalist, uh, liberal, conservative, whatever your uh, political identity is, uh, I challenge anyone to be able to tell them apart, which is black people. And, you know, again, it's just having this frame of mind uh, that there, if you can appreciate the diversity uh, of us, uh, it, it's, it's nonsensical to continue uh, these petty divides. Uh, I gave, I could give another analogy too. I mean, mm -hmm. just the way we look at things. Uh, if I'm walking down the street mm -hmm. and I see a, a beautiful sister mm -hmm. and I want to get to know her. Mm -hmm. So I walk up to her. I ask her her name and I, I tell her I, I like to take her out and, and get to get to know her better. Mm -hmm. She responds to me with a foreign accent. Is that supposed to change how I felt? five seconds before. No, that, no, that's, that's, that's not logical to me. No, especially your brother. We, <laughs> we don't care nothing about long as you, we ain't care about what you sound like. Long as you look good. That's, mm -hmm. <laughs> that's all we were worried about. Um, let me ask you this though, because a lot of people, even myself, you know, but before I went to start going to Africa and stuff, I had a few African friends or things like that, you know, cause in the nineties, you, you knew that this this dude, his name was a little bit different, but, you know, he kind of grew up around us and stuff like that. But we knew, hey, you know, he's a Nigerian. We didn't really think about it until you got older. And then you, as you got older, you started to notice there was really some things that was different. And, um, you know, I grabbed it. That first division, I saw him with the Howard University. When I was at the Howard University, that's when I saw real, like, you know, a lot of the, some dudes, but, you know, you had some guys that was, you know, depending on where it was from, you had the New York dudes over here, the Philly dudes over there, the DC dudes over there. But mostly you saw like, um, at, at least in my time, a lot of the people from the Caribbean were there, people from Africa were over there, and African American guys kind of rolled together. Um, now I think, you know, it's a little bit more integrated and stuff like that. But let's say if you're somebody that's from our culture, the African American culture, and you know, you want to have a more of a, a, a better dialogue um, with the with the with the global Pan African community and kind of get over some of those stereotypes. Um, how do you advise uh, somebody from the African American community or vice versa, somebody that's from the African community that don't that maybe they've watched some things from on TV, right? I've heard that going to Uganda, man. I thought African Americans were all gang members. They, uh, I, I didn't know you guys had business people. I'm like, look, there's a lot of people that are like me that work every day. They're very educated. You just don't see them. How do you, how do you, what would you advise for people that want to have more relationship with each other outside of our own culture? How can they do that? Okay. Well, you have to uh, look outside of, of mainstream media. Uh, you know, uh, so many of the images that we all see of uh, each other are 
are negative and and stereotypical and and you no know, obviously i don't think that is uh accidental so mm -hmm. uh mm -hmm. they see the worst of of us and mm -hmm. and we see the worst of of them uh you have to to a look outside of mainstream uh, media. And uh, fortunately now it's easier than ever to do that. Uh, you could look on YouTube, you know, again, the type of content that uh, King Gonda uh, uh, puts on. Uh, uh, so many of the videos that you see uh, on YouTube, uh, we have the Facebook groups like uh, my own Facebook group, African Diaspora Relationships are the same name. Uh, they're travel groups. Uh, in addition to uh, history uh, books, uh, content by uh, Dr. Uh, uh, Rashidi. Just so many ways that you could learn more uh, about the, the global Black community, the African diaspora that's available today that, that uh, wasn't. In addition to just talking to people and, and interacting with people, uh, uh, that's always some of the uh, the best education you can have uh if you had the desire to look outside what negative you've heard uh you could do it all right and tell people more about your book that you've written doc um you know talk talk about that you know talk about the book and and, and what it focuses on i know you got some people to purchase it um but your book african diaspora relationships talk about it and what it and what it entails Okay. So again, uh, my book was to discuss African diaspora relationships, to introduce it uh, to the general public, uh, to look at intercultural relationships between two black people from different cultures in every possible way it could be looked at. I look at uh, it from a historical standpoint. I talk about how we're connected to one another. Uh, I talk about how we have influenced one another. And, and breaking down stereotypes is what that is all about. I talk about how to meet black people from different cultures. If you're interested in it, in it. I talk about what to expect in uh, intercultural relationships between uh, two black people from different cultures, how to be successful. I talk about pitfall, uh, pitfalls to uh, avoid, uh, specifically, you know, how you know you're not being scammed, you know, uh, mm -hmm. How you know someone's not uh, marrying you for papers? Uh, mm -hmm. I interview couples uh, who are in African diaspora relationships, and I have them tell their experiences mm -hmm. as well as talking about my own experience. And uh, that's also uh, one thing I was, I was sharing with you as well. Uh, you had the same type of uh, discussions in some of my interviews. Uh, some of uh, the people that I, I interview. Uh, also were surprised that some of the negative reactions they got from uh, Marion uh, into the African diaspora that, you know, they're with someone black. So they, they didn't understand how some could uh, see a problem with that. So our experiences are just so diverse, just like every other relationship dynamic in a, in a black community. Uh, you have positive and negative. Uh, you have uh, people entering relationships for different reasons. Uh, these are just wonderful relationships that, uh, again, it's the least discussed dynamic in the Black community. So I wanted to give it the spotlight that it deserves. All right. And again, Dr. Mark, I definitely thank you so much for coming on. And we'll put the link to the book at the first comment. I was so glad that the community... I uh, was able to uh, support Dr. Mark. I hope that we can take him to the Amazon bestseller. All right. I'll be really, really, you know, excited for you guys to do that for him. Absolutely. And yeah, make him rich, Reagan Mitch, right? So we, that's the whole power. part of the, our community. We try to build over here. King Ghana is like, get our, get our best people to, to grow on the platform. And as you guys know, keep it real. King Ghana forever. We